Are gear vids lame and unnecessary? Yes and no. That's why I don't do a lot of them. I feel that they are necessary sometimes, but uh, my channel is just not built around doing a gear vid once a week. Um, you know, I, I understand some people out there that do them you know, once or even twice a week, they have sponsorship obligations and things like that. And that's what their channels are built around. You know, I don't need to show you guys nine ways how not to tie your shoelaces on your trail runner. Um, I mean, I've seen some gear vids out there that are on par with that kind of ridiculousness. And it's like, if you don't know certain things and there needs to be a video on it and you're watching it, uh, chances are you probably shouldn't go out there and hike if you need to watch that video. Moving forward though with this channel, my goal is not to put out the same video as everyone else. There's no question I will hike the JMT again maybe two or three more times in my life. Will I do another JMT video? Most likely not. 99% chance no. Been there and done that. There is literally thousands of John Muir Trail videos out there, including mine. I just don't want to keep beating a dead horse, showing everybody the same exact scene from any of the 10 passes along the trail. You know, everybody has seen those in thousands of videos. So we're, we're trying to get more off trail with our hikes and getting a little bit more aggressive on the itinerary. That's kind of the direction that Randy and I have discussed that we would like to um, take our hikes and take you guys along. We want to start showcasing some of these places that are very hard to get to. Not a lot of people get into them. There's tons and tons of beautiful spots all throughout our national parks in the southwest, everywhere across America that that 90% of hikers don't even venture into and so kind of our new direction and goal is to start focusing on those locations and places. When we put together the the Secchi Traverse hike last year we were trying to find intel on Longley Pass and there are a couple of blogs you can find online people with pictures you know that sort of thing but there was absolutely no video that we could find anywhere of anybody going over Longley. And Gardner Pass, really, for that matter, there's there's a ton of pictures, a ton of vlogs, but no videos. And um, we kind of want to change that, not because it's, it's kind of a, a weird situation. I'm not trying to show people these places because I want them to become like the Corridor Trails, the JMT, and and all this. It's just, I try to make videos that I want to see first and foremost. I have to please myself. But second of all, I just want to give you guys something fresh and something new. So we're trying to uh, keep it authentic, keep the films moving, keep them fluid, you know. Just want to keep the video raw. I want to show you guys everything. I want to show you the good. I want to show you the bad. I want to show you the bullshit we go through. Um, I'm not trying to hide anything out there. I don't want it to be all fluff and beautiful. Uh, there's there's a whole other side to hiking that people that just watch videos that have never been out there, they don't understand. And I'm trying to show everybody everything that the hike includes. We have some very big, great hikes coming up this year. We have another nine night, 10 day Grand Canyon hike. This one's gonna be uh, off trail, some more floating across the river getting to the north side, the winds. So we're gonna finally hit the winds this year. It's not gonna be until September, but we're gonna make it a crazy, kind of like a Secchi Traverse hike. It's gonna be a two-weeker, and it's gonna involve a lot of off-trail in the winds. We don't wanna just stay on the Continental Divide Trail and hike through the winds and show you guys that because there's literally thousands of videos out there showing you guys that. I really just want to say thank you to everybody that has stuck with me through the years. Um, all the original subscribers. I know why you guys are here. I, I get it. And not a lot of people get my videos and understand what I'm trying to do with them. 
but you guys do. And I just want to thank you guys for sticking with me. I want to thank all the new subscribers that are getting it and coming on board. Um, again, I'm just trying to keep it fresh and, and give you guys some new stuff to watch. So I really appreciate you guys. Happy New Year to everybody. And uh, let's dive into the gear. I'm going to show you guys gear that I bring pretty much on any hike, no matter what. Just this is what gets me through these gnarly hikes that Randy and I and Greg take on. So I will be putting out a separate food video that dives more specifically in the food aspect of it as well. That will be coming uh, shortly after this one. So stay tuned for that one as well. So here we go. Here's my gear. Okay, so here we are. I uh, just got back from um, a Grand Canyon hike and it was probably one of the most difficult hikes in terms of terrain that I've ever done in my life. Um, it was pretty brutal. Me and, me and Randy went through a suffer fest, but at the same time, it's, it's such a beautiful place to hike through and we got to see some sights and things that uh, most people will never see unless you go through what we went through and get off trail. So it's worth it. But um, I'm going to go ahead and start with the clothes that I wore. Uh, obviously, I wore this hat. In, I used to wear the wide brim hats that went all the way around. I'm kind of getting away from that wide brim kind of look. And it's basically just a look preference. It's not like one performs better than the other or anything. So. These uh, fish monkey gloves I buy at a local sporting goods shop here in Big Bear. Um, obviously they're made for fishermen. Pair of underwear, pair of socks that I wear on the daily. Uh, just a basic fast drying, moisture wicking, synthetic shirt with a hoodie. Again, this was bought at Bass Pro and um, I always wear long sleeve just to keep the sun off my arms and off as much of the of my body as I can because I don't like wearing the the suntan lotion or anything like that sunblock because it just gets real sticky and the dust and the dirt just starts sticking all over you so um, I do try to cover up as much as possible I did switch pants as well these are the uh, revolution race pants they're a convertible pant and Again, just look for a different look. You know, just gotta switch it up. These performed great. I mean, they, they're they tough, they're rugged, they're durable, and very comfortable, very mobile in them. It's one of their only zip-off brands that they have from Revolution Race. Found out about these Topo Athletics, and uh, these are the Mountain Racer 3s. And I heard that the Vibram on the bottom is lasting longer than the ultras. So these are basically just like the ultras that I've been wearing. Love the way they fit. Again, it's a wide toe box. This Vibram is unbelievable. When we're on some of the steeper slick rock stuff that it just, it felt like Velcro. Every time I lifted my foot, it almost felt and sounded like I was lifting my foot off of a Velcro pad. It was weird. So these things are awesome for off trail. Uh, hiking poles. Anybody that's been following me for any length of time knows that I really never used hiking poles in the beginning of my hiking adventures. The reason I never used them was because it hindered my ability to, to shoot video and stuff, but I've found ways around it and, uh, you know, just deal with it because it's definitely going to save the knees and the legs. I don't buy those very expensive black diamond brand or any of that. With all the off trail we do, I wear these tips out in a year. So those need, are gonna need to be replaced. But also the reason I don't, I, I know they sell brands where you can replace the tips, but I like to, to also just replace the whole pole at the end of the year anyway. I put a lot of stress on these throughout all the hiking we do through the year. So I just want, I, I usually start with a brand new set every year. These are just your basic Ascent Blue Ridge brand from Bass Pro. I think they were 30 or 40 bucks no reason for me to spend 150 bucks on a pair that I'm going to throw away and just buy a new pair anyway the next year. So I save a little money there. Probably one of your most important pieces of gear. Um, Osprey, I, I've been using these XS 58s for years. I've ventured off and tried other packs. I can't stand them. Um, they're, they're great with 
with their weight, I mean, some packs are, you know, under two pounds, but the whole thing with a pack is, is you have to be able to carry the weight that you're carrying comfortably. So even though this is two and a half pound pack, it carries the weight so much better than a pound and a half or a pound and three quarter pack. Um, you, you think you're saving weight. Wow, I'm shaving off, you know, three quarters or even a full pound just in the pack weight itself but it doesn't carry all the other weight as well and it's actually more miserable. So that is a big point that I think a, a lot of people miss with changing over to these cottage uh, company packs, you know, and uh, just trying to go as super lightweight as possible, but they're losing the ability to, to carry the weight with the, the way this harness system works is just incredible. Happy to say that both of our packs are right at 40 pounds. That's with nine, 10 days of food and, um, you know, our pack rafts, our oars and all the gear to get a 10 day Grand Canyon expedition style hike, um, completed. So not too bad. This is one of the more recent, um, Exos 58s. I do like the fact that they did come back with the hip belt pockets. I keep extra batteries in here, um, food, you know, stuff like that. Another thing about the Exos 58s, the older ones, I love how this top lid completely comes off because everything I like to have at my disposal when I get to camp is in this top lid. So I like to be able to detach it. But on these later packs, the back end was fixed. You couldn't do this. They changed that for some reason, but I kind of custom put these uh, quick clip disconnects on so that I could have that feature again with this pack. So awesome feature. Okay, let's start unloading. Um, I always carry a beanie. Just sometimes it gets a little cold. Um, you know, regulating your heat through your head between a beanie and a hat and, and your hoodie or whatever makes a, such a big difference. A lot of heat escapes from your head. So always have that accessible. Um, been using a pad lately just for, a, there, there's a lot of reasons. Um, when you get to camp, you know, you can unfold it. You can, when you're taking all your gear out of your pack, you got something to put all your gear on. So you're not sitting in the dirt. When you take a break for lunch or any other breaks, you got something to sit on so your ass is not sitting in the dirt or the mud. And then it's also extra protection at night underneath my sleeping pack in case I'm on very rocky or, you know, whatever kind of terrain that can puncture a hole in our air mattresses. So um, also uh, comes in handy in case there is a hole in the air pad that I can't fix and I do have a backup. So very handy um, piece of gear that, you know, people might say, oh, that's, that's, a, that's a luxury weight, but yep, you're right, it is a luxury weight. And insurance. Um, on the other side, I carry my water bottle. Another thing about these Exos packs that I love is the quickness of getting a water bottle in and out access to it so I always like to have camp shoes um, I've been using these canvas style shoes forever since I started backpacking the one thing I couldn't do was cross creeks in them because they just soak up the water and stay wet so I have uh, switched to crocs that dry very quickly so these come in handy for crossing creeks now because they dry instantaneously pretty much and I take up the volume in them. Um, one shoe has the bottom part of my pants, you know, for quick access in case I want to put my pants back on. Um, and then the other shoe carries my rain jacket in it. It is a light heart gear. You know, this is great for um, just layering if it starts sprinkling or whatnot. It's just quick, easy access. I don't have to go too far into the pack to get it. So, unbelievably light and they perform unbelievably well. And that is everything on the outside. I'm diving into the inside. On top, I always, 
on the very top to keep my down jacket. Uh, it's a epoxy jacket, you know, full on, just feather down. If it's a cold day and I get to lunch and I'm cold, I can layer up real quick with this and stay warm while we're resting. And then also when you get to camp, you know, it's the first thing out, you can kind of put it on, keep warm while you're setting up camp, whatever. And I like it because it kind of just pads around the top and I can stuff it down the sides and kind of pads out rough edges against the pack too, so. Food always on top. Um, again, quick, fast access to it for breaks, lunch, whatever. On this trip, I didn't have a bear can. I, you know, Grand Canyon doesn't require them, but I do take my ear sack because the rodents can get bad. And this is their, their rodent and bear proof bag, the top of the line one. Uh, all this in it right now, though, is trash and maybe a few snacks, but that's what I carried uh, on this hike. And then I do carry a separate bag, which carries all my uh, cooking gear and uh, any extra food that doesn't fit in the ear sack. So as far as cooking gear goes that I carry, I like to have my own cup for coffee in the morning, tea. The only thing that goes in this jet boil is water. That's it. I never have to clean this. I got instant hot water in a minute or less sometimes. The fuel can fits in there and the stove. Beautiful setup. Some people say they're heavy, but you know what? When I only have to carry this small little fuel can for a 10 day trek and I didn't even run out, that saves in your weight right there. So, uh, just your basic titanium spoon and uh randy bought this for me it's um it's from big sky they basically you know we we repackage all of our dehydrated food into quart size ziploc baggies and these are kind of act like a cozy so when we pour the hot water in and then we put the bags into these and seal them up and they you know just keeps them more warm and kind of hydrates the food a little better what i learned last year in the grand canyon during our hike that Randy and I did through the Jim Canyons when the rain was horrendous for multiple days. I noticed that when the rain goes between your your neck and your back and your pack and all that, and that starts getting wet, even though you're wearing this, but after hours of it, the, the rain's gonna start soaking through this and your back's gonna start getting damp and that's when you start getting cold. That's when the hypothermia starts setting in and the shivers start. This thing is just another added extra layer that actually goes over the pack as, as a pack cover, but it also comes up over your head as another second hoodie and over your shoulders and just attaches right here. So it's like a, like a double wall tent in a way, I guess you can look at it, and it keeps the water from going down the back of your neck and between the pack and your back, um, you know, in this area. So. I used it last year on our Seki Traverse hike, and I was perfectly warm, was not wet one bit with this. Awesome. I will never go anywhere without these two working together. On this trek, I used my Nemo Hornet 1P. People that have been following me, they know that I'm, I'm a Big Agnes and a Nemo fan. Those are the only two tents I've really ever used. But I'm going back to the Big Agnes Tiger Wall 1P. I used a 2P uh, previously, but the only reason I went back to my Nemo's was because I wanted to shrink my footprint in trying to find a campsite. It was a bitch trying to find a big enough campsite, especially when you're off trail on Grand Canyon style hikes or even in the Sierra, to find something that's big enough for a 2P tent. So I went back and I started using my, my Nemo 1P but I'm not liking how high the fly sits off the ground. I mean, in some cases, it's, it's, it's a good 14 inches off the ground and there's no coverage on the main tent body. I'm not liking that at all. So I went back to the Tiger Wall, which has the fly down lower, you know, like a traditional tent where it's only about, you know, four or five inches above the ground and gives you better protection for rain and for even blowing dust, which was our problem on this last hike. So I am switching, I just got that tent. While we're on tents, I'm gonna show you how I set up my tent and rock it out when 
um, you can't drive a stake into the ground when you're just on total slab rock. So I took video of that last year on the Seki hike because we had a campsite that was like that where I had them rock out pretty much the whole tent. So I'll show you how I do that. What I did is I added these extra length here cords and I put little loop knots at the end so that I can pull it, pull it through the loop and make a bigger loop to whatever size the rock is. And then I just attached it to the normal. Here's the normal tent and where the stake would go in right here. But you can't fit a rock in there, so. And each corner of the tent has that. And then on the foot end, I just use stakes to hold the fly in. But the main tent body is again rocked out. So that's how I fully rock out my tent on a granite slab. I used to not divide all of my stuff up into these um, separate stuff sacks, but the stuff sacks have gotten so lightweight over the years that it's nice to just keep certain items all consolidated. Like in the tent bag, you know, I got the footprint, got the actual tent all rolled up with the fly, obviously. And then I also keep the stakes in there as well so that when I go pull this bag out, I got everything that I need to set the tent up. I'm not looking in different spots for it. So, um, and then the poles I also keep on the inside of the main pack. Randy keeps his on the outside, but with all this off trail stuff we're doing, I just kind of like to keep them um, protected inside. I try to fit as much gear inside this main compartment as possible. The only stuff I want on the outside is stuff I need access to a lot and quickly. So, um, another dry sack. This is all my um, extra clothes that I don't wear while I'm hiking, only sleeping. So basically, uh, at camp, I will take my hiking shirt off for the day, uh, wash up, and I'll put this micro fleece on, and I'll sleep in that. I'm a cold sleeper, so my feet get cold at night. So I like to bring these um, very heavy wool socks to sleep in as well. And again, I never wear them just for sleeping at night. Uh, the extra pair of underwear, so I alternate between the ones I'm wearing and my clean ones, and I wash a pair of underwear, and I wash a pair of socks every night. So I only bring two pairs of socks that I wear and two pair of underwear that I wear. And then, um, again, cold sleeper, um, under armor, thermal bottoms. And that's it for the clothes. One other thing I do want to mention, um, learned a little trick is, so in this bag, I have some uh, fabric softeners and just kind of keeps things smelling fresh. I keep a couple in this clothes bag. I keep a couple in my sleeping bag, my quilt bag that I carry in, which is coming up here next. So this is my sleeping pad and quilt and all my sleeping system here. This is, again, keeping everything consolidated that I need when I'm setting up a certain type of thing. So this is my uh, new Flextel uh, pump. This thing is awesome. I didn't have to charge this thing one time while I was out there and it filled the, the raft up because we did pack rafting on this trip. This thing filled that whole pack raft up three different times and it filled my pad up every night and I never had to recharge it. And I mean, it's so small, so light, um, still got juice. The awesome thing too about this is you unscrew it and the battery inside is rechargeable with the USB-C connection right there. So if I had to recharge it. Thermarest sleeve, um, this just adds so much warmth also keeps the quilt clean i never clean my quilt i never have to with all the clothes that i wear sleeping and between this my quilt stays pretty much stink free and you know pretty pretty clean 
Um, and here is the quilt. This is a enlightened equipment quilt. My 20 degree. It's a regular width, regular length. Thing is super warm. So this is the revelation. The reason I ordered a new one is because every single night that I go out there, so this is a full quilt, as you can see, and this basically zips up, the zipper goes to here, and closes up and makes a foot box, and then you cinch these up, and then you got a full-on foot box. I've noticed over the years that I never sleep with this thing fully open like this. I'm always creating the foot box. So I ordered an Enigma model that always just, it's basically the same thing as this, except it gets rid of the zipper and it's always a foot box. So um, these are the 950 fill downs, so the highest level you can get for the weight to warmth ratio and uh, just performs great. I love this thing. This is a very, one of my most favorite pieces of gear and probably one of the more important pieces of gear too. This thing weighs less than 16 ounces. I mean, can't beat that. And then the air mattress. Um, again, it's just a Thermarest Neo Air, you know, the basic standard. Um, Again, it comes to comfort when we're out there a lot of the time. So this is the regular length. I'm only a 5'9 guy, but it is the extra wide. Um, I don't like my shoulders hanging off the, the edges. I get cold at night if they touch the ground. So the extra wide lets my arms, because I'm a back sleeper, it lets my arms just rest on the pad instead of on the ground. So um, again, this is like 16 ounces, I think, right at a pound. Um, you know, again, weight to warmth ratio on these, unbelievable. So between all that stuff, I am super warm, even in, in sub-freezing temperatures, down to 20 degrees, I'm, I'm totally comfortable. Um, moving on, you can hear that stuff inside. So because the Grand Canyon, this trip warranted pack rafting, um, we have the Supai Adventure Gear oars. So these three sections go together and then paddle on each side. It's the Supai Adventure Gear double paddle. Super light for the actual boat. Again, Supai Adventure Gear. These boats are awesome. They, they do what they're supposed to do. It all, you know, compacts down into this. I keep it at the bottom of the pack because I'm not using this regularly. Um, if you guys ever wonder, hey, I never see John with a PFD. Well, that's because that's how big it is. Okay, I don't carry one of those big giant vest ones. Um, Grand Canyon says you can use a class three or a class five. These uh, hip belt ones that I strap on are, uh, these are class five. So they're super tiny. You can see how small it is. I mean, here's a jet boil. I mean, look at that. It's awesome to be able to, to have this gear at such a lightweight to be able to do the treks that we want to do in the Grand Canyon and get to the north side. So. Now for the brain of the pack real quickly here. I'm gonna run through this stuff real quick. Um, two compartments on this. Again, I love how it detaches from the pack. Gives me all the stuff that I want at camp without having to take everything out real quickly. Um, here's all the cords to rock out the tent. So there's two compartments, one underneath, one on the top. The stuff underneath is gear that I don't need to have access to a lot. I don't go into this section a lot. And then the bigger compartment at the top is where I keep stuff that I have regular access to, basically. So I'll start with the one underneath. Um, extra pair of gloves. These are outdoor research gloves. Cold days, you know, if it's around freezing or in the 30s and you're hiking and your fingers are cold. Also, they have these waterproof shells that slide over the, the neoprene. So pretty awesome gloves. I, I love these things. They've come in handy many times during hikes. Um, rain pants. Again, I think these are outdoor research. Very lightweight. Um, just in case, you know, you never know. Uh, copper fit knee brace. On very extreme downhills, I usually will slide this over my knee just for some extra protection. It's my left knee that kind of sometimes gives me problems from a hike I did in the Grand Canyon about 10 years ago. Mosquito net, um, even though I didn't use it in the Grand Canyon, this weighs nothing. So I bring it anyway. I just keep it with my pack. 
And this is my first aid kit. In here I carry some vitamin C, some ibuprofen, um, things of that nature. I think I got some Tums in there just in case. Extra batteries for the headlamp, medicated pain relief patch just in case somebody, you know, I pull back muscle or something like that. My patch kit for my air mattress, bandage in case somebody sprains an ankle or something. Little repair kit. I have some needle, thread, and tweezers in here just in case something tears or rips. Some extra duct tape for repair on the tent and some gauze tape bandage some Neosporin and various, um, you know, bandages, not, not a lot of band-aids. I think I got one of each style of band-aid. If you need more than that and you need to put more band-aids on and a hike than that, then maybe you should maybe learn how to walk a little better. Anyway, trash bag. This, uh, in heavy rains, we will, again, triple protection with everything being in their own dry sack the pack hoodie, and everything inside the pack being in a trash bag. Triple protection. Don't want anything to get wet. Extra Ziploc bags just in case, you know, I need to put gear or something else or something I forgot. You know, I got a gallon and a, and a quart size. I just keep those as extras. That's everything in the bottom. Okay, first thing in the top is my water filter, uh, platypus, gravity, Water filter, four liter. They are a little weighty, probably around the three quarters of a pound, 12 ounce range, but um, just love the way they work at camp. You can fill it up first thing when you get to camp and it does all the work while you're setting up camp. And then when you're done, you have four liters of clean water for everybody to drink from. And then Randy does carry the squeeze version as well for when we want to fill up on the go. I have my toiletries, which consist of my pack towel. It's like a chamois, um, quick drying, rinses out real quick. This comes in handy for washing up the body when you don't want to jump in that cold ass lake or stream. Um, also comes in handy when uh, you set your tent up in the rain and you want to dry off the inside, rinse it out, works great. Um, or if there's a mosquito infested camp, usually fill up my, my bucket that I do laundry in, set it outside my door, and then just open the door slightly, dip that in to rinse off and clean off inside the tent without having to worry about mosquitoes. Um, obviously, I use this for laundry. That's my little contribution to LNT. We try to do our laundry away from the water sources and such. So, a little bit of camp soap right there. That's for any dishes, washing the body, everything. It's super concentrated. Bins, I always carry this no matter what, just in case, you never know, especially in the Sierra. Some Aquaphor, things dry out when you're in cold, extreme, high temperatures, low temperatures. My toothbrush, um, just small little compact, small little toothpaste, usually lasts me for a whole trip. And then my uh, chapstick. Bandana, again, I wear this sometimes. Um, not a lot though, but just another rag to kind of wipe stuff down, wipe stuff out, whatever, dry something off. This is my electronics bag. So I have an Anchor 20,000 milliamp battery pack. This will keep my phone, the GoPro um, charge, anything charged basically for a whole trip. Um, in reach, you know, uh, just keep in contact with the outside world just in case emergencies and stuff like that. Five extra GoPro batteries in here. I got the cord to recharge the GoPro. This works for recharging my Flextel pump, the GoPro, and my phone, that one cord right there. And then my headlamp. And then I just have a little pouch in here. This has my uh, all my SD cards and stuff for the GoPro. So I keep all the electronics in this plastic bag, keep it waterproof. Again, consolidation. Trowel, got sick of breaking sticks when you gotta go and then, you know, you're rushing around. And I carry baby wipes. Um, I don't do toilet paper. Um, I just like that extra clean kind of feeling that you get from using a baby wipe. And it also comes in handy at dry camps when you wanna you know, your feet are just stinky, disgusting, dirty. You can get them clean with a baby wipe. 
um, for the night at least, at least your feet, you know. And uh, that's basically it. That's everything, you guys. Again, this is not geared for, uh, you know, being ultra super light. This is, you know, we, we go out there to um, enjoy these hikes and be in the hikes, like I said at the beginning of this video. We, we want to be in the moment and, and not just run through it. Every time Greg, Randy, and I start a hike, our goal is not to get from start to end. Our goal is to get in there and enjoy it and create memories. Whether or not something deters us from finishing the intended itinerary route or, or whatever, or we got to backtrack, it is what it is. We had a great time. We were comfortable. We kind of lean on the side of comfort more than weight, but weight's always there. So we do keep weight in mind, but comfort always prevails when we do make our gear choices because we do these horrendous off-trail treks that, you know, when you get to camp at night, you want to be a little bit more comfortable. You don't want to be bare bonesing it and just kind of miserable out there. You want some comfort at that point. And we do enjoy our camps. Some hikers just don't give a shit where they camp. They'll just plop anywhere. We sometimes will take half an hour to 45 minutes to find the camp we want because camps are important to us. That's a big part of our experience and adventure out there. You know, we're, we're a different type of hiker, like I said in the beginning. We're not just out there to, to tick off a hike in the beginning. You know, we want to, obviously we want to get it done, but um, it's more just about being out there, being in the experience, going to see these places that a lot of people don't get to see, and uh, hopefully we can keep bringing you guys along for them. So, hope you enjoyed, and um, we'll see you on the next one.